Hey guys, and welcome to episode 2 of ESO's Lab. Today we're going to work on this little DIY alarm clock kit. It's a simple project to get you up to speed on uh, some soldering basics, and uh, that's a cheap enough one. I think it's about 8 bucks. We'll take a look at that in a sec, but uh, great little alarm clock. has an alarm feature, has uh, temperature functions, as well as a photosensitive resistor uh, that makes it smart enough to know if it's night or daytime. So we'll see what that does for us, all coming up in a few minutes. Hey guys, so what is it we're actually looking at here? Well, we're going to head on over to my favorite shipper from China, 30 Days Later website, AliExpress.com. It's a fantastic website, highly recommend it. Uh, basically the Chinese Amazon, um, and you can get stuff for super cheap if you're willing to wait for it, though you can pay a little extra and get it quicker. Um, so far, no problem. I have literally had hundreds of orders from this site, and I have had one dispute, and that was only because the seller sent uh, the wrong item. Um, and I click the dispute button after trying to email and resolve it. That didn't work out. I click the dispute button, instant refund, and I got to keep the wrong item that was sent. So um, highly recommend it. Secure, fast, and uh, easy, and lots of stuff on there, right? 1.3 billion Chinese people can't be wrong. So check it out. Um, okay, let's take a look at this. So uh, just on the site, if you want to follow along, we are looking at DIY alarm clock. There we go. Let's see if we can type here. <clears throat> Yeah, and there it is. Um, so there's a ton of them. There's a whole bunch of different cool little DIY alarm clocks on here. So I think I paid around $8 Canadian or something like that. Uh, but I, I've seen them as low as $4. just depends. You know, some sellers blow them out. You can get them without the clear acrylic case, and that makes them significantly cheaper. Um, but they're a great little kit. Um, the silk screen is great on the PCB. It's available. Actually, this guy's got four colors available. I only saw three, but I guess you can get it in white now. I've only seen the RGB, the red, green, and blue. Um, I didn't specify on my order, so I ended up getting t uh, a couple blue ones. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure you do that if you're at all concerned about the color. But anyway, there you have it. Let's uh, let's get to building. All right, so this is what you'll get once you've ordered uh, this clock in the mail. It comes in a Ziploc baggie here. No power supply included in this clip. It is powered by a 5 volt USB so you just need any kind of standard USB charger to power the device. And we've got our baggie of goodies, a couple resistors, a couple capacitor, photoresistive diode, uh, there's a, a, a thermocouple, and a battery holder. And here we have the brains of the uh, of the unit. This is an STC uh, microprocessor. So if you're familiar or know anything about microprocessors or Arduinos or anything like that, it's basically a, a general input-output type microprocessor. I don't recall the specs on this thing, but it actually has an analog to digital controller. It has like 10 outputs. Uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, you know, uh, interesting micro microcontroller uh, on the cheaper end, not like an Atmega or anything like that, but uh, um, functional here. And then there's a small uh, eight uh, eight pin dip here. That's that's actually the clock chip. So. It's actually the little thing here um, that is uh, doing all the clock functions. All this microprocessor is doing is controlling the input from the thermistor, or I should say reading the input from the thermistor and the uh, uh, photoresistive photoresistor, and um, then, of course, doing the output to the uh, four-digit seven-segment LED display. So clock, and this one's also got a little bit of RAM in there to keep the time, um, and also accepts the power from the battery when the system's not on to uh, hold the time in memory. So, yeah, little battery comes with it, which is which is great. And something to note here for the beginning solderer is that they come with the uh, the sockets, the IC sockets. So you're actually soldering these onto the board instead of soldering the the ICs directly, which um, helps to um, 
you know minimize any damage from heat for from a an amateur solder so there you go hard to damage then of course we have our our four digit seven segment display um, it's nicely packaged with some foam so the pins don't get wrecked on there and it's got a uh, plastic cover on there to keep it clean blue dot indicates that this is the blue one I guess throw that there uh, okay and then uh, the other piece here it comes with these uh, plexiglass or acrylic um, case which is uh, all laser cut uh, and it's actually very well put together it's, it's kind of neat I think it looks pretty cool actually when it's done and you'll see that and the, the PC board this is our the main thing we're concerned with here um, it's actually a uh, very thick, really nice dual-sided PC board. The the holes are, are tinned through through each side. Um, I think you'll find it's it's quite easy to work with. Um, silk screen nicely to to indicate. Okay, so there's our dots there. There's our numbers, and so this you know the orientation of this goes right on there like that. Everything else you got your battery holder. Comes with a little speaker in here. I don't know if you call it a speaker, maybe a little buzzer. Uh, and then, of course, your power supply input, and then the rows for the ICs. So let's go ahead and get started with the soldering. All right, so here we have our PCB. I've got the components laid out. Now, generally, the way that you're going to want to solder this together is with the shortest or uh, <clears throat> lowest components, so in this case, resistors, so that when you put them through the board, you can turn it upside down and have the legs coming through and then move up to the next higher component and, and continue to do that so it holds it against the board as you're trying to solder it. Uh, this board looks pretty clean and in good condition and if you're using uh, a good quality solder you probably don't need to do a, a, you know any kind of cleaning on it but uh, I'm just going to take a piece of tissue and I'm going to take some Purell just because it's alcohol that's going to be uh, sufficient to clean it in this case. Now you want to use the Ocean Kiss smell uh, because that's obviously best for for soldering. Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit of alcohol in there. Okay, maybe a lot. We'll just wipe that off. And so that's going to get any, you know, fingerprints or oil off the board. But as I said, if you've got a, a good quality solder with a good flux built into it, uh, that's going to be fine. And you probably don't need to do that. Oh, that smells lovely. I am using an MG Chemicals, a 6337 uh, tin lead uh, mix. And I think I actually bought these off of Amazon for like two or three bucks or something so uh, locally they're they you know some of around six or eight dollars but uh, yeah even you can buy them um, online for, for pretty cheap all right so our soldering iron is heating up I won't uh, talk too much about this um, I'll just speed through this because uh, I'm sure uh, you know it's gonna be boring sitting here watching it the instructions are written in a deep, deep Chinglish and very, very hard to understand when it comes to the actual operation of what this thing does. But um, there is a handy chart here with the uh, the components, the labeling, what goes where. You've got 104 capacitors, which are, are 0.1 microfarad, and then you've got the 22 picofarad capacitors here. Uh, resistors here, uh, they're all the same resistors, so you don't need to uh, be aware of what they are. Switches, photodiode, thermocouple, battery holder, power supply, etc. All neatly labeled here, so you know exactly where it goes. Alright, so let's get this together. I'll show you the first one here. So the resistor is going to go into R, uh, the label R1, R2, R3. Uh, like <clears throat> Very, very clearly labeled out and silk screen on the board, so very easy to put together. Put the legs through like so. Alright, then you can just pull them out. So you can uh, spread the legs at an angle and that kind of holds them in, right? So we'll do all of them like that. Right, just hold them like this, pull the legs out. This is R1, R2. There's no D component, otherwise I could say D2. R2, D2 on here. Okay, and then another resistor here. So there's uh, three total resistors on here. This is all cleaned up and ready for soldering, and I am pushing it through. Okay, so there we go. That's all three of them through. Again, just spread the legs so that uh, it remains on the board. But, and then, but when you hold them down like that, because there's something there, uh, they're not the highest one. I'm just going to 
there even out this board so it stays put and true. Okay, so very quickly, my uh, technique for soldering. Okay, soldering iron is hot. I'm going to put the, the tip onto the component. One, two, solder, one, two, just like that. Again, tip on the component end the hole. One, two, solder, one, two. Okay, just like that. Heating the component, one, two, solder, one, two. Let's try that again. It wasn't very tinned there, so let's try that again. Good. One, two. Hard to make contact there. One, two, and one, two. One, two, and one, two. And just a note, you should never breathe the smoke, of course, from the solder. I have, not really visible here, but I have this IKEA lamp that I bought for $9. And on it, I have a... Uh, exhaust tube that goes outside and I've got a little 12 volt fan that's powered up and I can crank it to 24. Oh yeah, it really starts to suck that uh, that solder out. For the purpose of this video though, because it's, uh, you know, we want to be able to hear what's going on, uh, I'll keep it on the low setting. So there you have it. So once that is done, very important with this build. This will be, the, I think, the final tip on this build that you really need to pay attention to. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward soldering from here on out. Make sure that the leads are clipped extremely short. And that'll become apparent why later, when you try to put the case together, it's uh, quite, uh, there's not a whole lot of clearance or, or room in the case. So um, that, that's especially important on the power supply connector that's there. Um, uh, e even though it's got these really large leads, you're going to want to cut those down too. So if you've got a nice pair of clippers like these, again, bought these online, I think on AliExpress for about three bucks. These are fantastic hardened little clippers, and they work very great. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and proceed through the rest of the soldering, and you can watch it in high speed. So we're, we're pretty well at the end here, um, aside from building the case, which is pretty straightforward. When you get these ICs, um, I don't know if you can tell, but the uh, the actual pins are kind of splayed out, so they're going like wide like that, and it, it's very hard. They're actually wider than uh, than the, the the socket it goes into. So what you want to do is I, I just like to hold it against the table and then just kind of fold it in. Just push it down like that, just to kind of bend the pins straight. You want to make sure all the, these are these ones in particular are very very soft. So I'm just gonna push it down against the table like so. I'm just gonna hold it on either end again. Push these ones down like that, and so that just makes them straight, so that they're gonna go into that socket that much easier. Make sure that the correct orientation. So once you get it so that it looks like yeah, that's gonna go in now. 
don't force it just make sure yep okay all looks good once you think you've got it there then go ahead and push it through it, it is a bit of a struggle it, uh, I really have to put a lot of weight into it but it looks like it is connected in there so all right same deal with this one although it's smaller so you can just kind of pinch it uh, in your fingers like that roll it a bit until those pins are are like so right there right there push it in with your thumb till she clicks and that is it my friends that is built so hey probably should check the operation before we go ahead and build a case on this last thing remaining is to get this battery It's a little 1220. Nice little uh, battery container that they've got here. It really holds it in really nice. So there, there it is. Our battery's installed. And now the moment of the truth. Okay. And I happen to have a convenient USB socket on my desk here. Will it fire? Will it fire? There it is. I don't know if you can see it on there, but there it is. Great, so let's go ahead and put the case together. It's always great when you can make a mistake, because it makes you learn something. Uh, so, I don't know if you noticed this. This powered up, but I didn't actually notice what was on the screen. But uh, plugging in, and uh, can you see that there? I'm not sure. Maybe if I put it behind this, it'll become more legible. Yeah, it's it's pretty glaring bright. The LED is pretty bright. So there, what does it say? F F F F. <laughs> so that's that's obviously not the the what we're expecting here or what what we need. Um, so what is it? What's the problem? Well, I took my multimeter again and looked at all the pins. So you know, place it on the pin and then find you know where that continuity is looks like all the pins are connected and everything checks out that's usually the most common thing with a seven segment display if something is not working correctly that you know the actual contacts on the screen itself are not connected correctly and i started looking at it and i'm like yeah everything's all connected oh hold on a second look at this guy right here i don't know if you can see it here Let's zoom into it here and refocus focus focus anyway yeah look at our little clock chip Eh, leg is sticking out. That little son of a bitch stuck a leg out when I was pushing it in. So there's why you want to make sure everything is lined up before you go ahead and push it all in. So what do you do in this situation? Well, you throw the whole thing out and start again. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, and I'm just going to stick that in and pry it up. Yeah, look at that little, little son of a bitch. Yeah, leg's all kinky crooked. Ain't gonna chooch like that, as AVE would say, one of my favorite YouTubers. Okay. There we go. Okay, these are soft. They feel like they're lead. They're they're so so delicate and soft. So okay. So we are going to reseat that back in there. All right. Now we're lined up. Okay. Here's the magic. Ready? Plug her in. Ah, no smoke is coming out. It says it's seven fifty-six. Gonna put, oh, look at that. Look at that loud buzzer. And it says 8 o'clock. Yeah, I just covered it. Like, this is what I'm talking about. That thing's pretty, pretty freaking loud. Anyway, so now we can hit the set. Go through. Yeah, and every time you push a button to set, it does that chirping. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, set the alarm. Set whether or not you want it to go off. And you can set the, the, the time display, set the temperature display. There's also seems to be an option, like I said, that all this stuff is written in Chinglish. Um, so when it's talking about adjusting the settings, it says something like, every time adjust, need to press set, different in different setting, press set, return to normal nine walking. I'm, I'm assuming they mean working or normal, you know, process, but it's just all written. Press set key again does not affect sleep. And, you know, it's it's very hard to decipher. But if anybody has this and they've deciphered what it is, I mean, it's easy enough to go through and, and set everything and, and get it, you know, functioning how you need it to. But um, how how exactly it works with the photoresistor and how it knows what uh, what time of day it is and whether or not to, to run the alarm so it doesn't disturb your snooze is... A mystery because these instructions are really, really weird. I'm sure if I played with it, uh, I can get it. But yeah. Anyway, let's close that up, and it's time to build the case. All right. So here's our case. 
simple. Take the uh, paper off. Yeah, you gotta speed through this here because you know you don't need to see this part. again. There's our clock. It's currently 22.06. Alright, join us for the next project here on ESO's Lab. The next project is going to be um, a very cool one, a little bit more than the basic stuff here. We're going to dig into our first Arduino project and, and using sensors and that sort of thing. It's going to be a simple temperature sensor, but we are going to make it do something very cool so stay tuned for that it's you're not going to want to miss it um it's it's a pretty cool project i'm excited about tune in check it out thanks bye all right, so here's the first of several updates on our Arduino Power Grow Op. Uh, we haven't actually had a video showcasing this project yet, but at the end of each episode, regardless of whether it's uh, you know on this specific project or, or other projects, I'll post a quick update. So you can see we've got some basil, some butter crunch lettuce, uh, edible chrysanthemum, and a little bit of flowers and some basil babies coming up there. Um, You'll you, in this update section. You'll find a quick link to the next episode or previous episodes, uh, and just serves as a quick update on how this is going. It's going to be a very iterative, evolutionary uh, project as as things change. Update the software, the code, etc., and update the hardware, sensors, all that kind of stuff. So weekly, you'll see how things are growing. Click uh, the link here for the next episode when it's available. Thanks for watching.